Hey everybody, welcome back to Neurobiology at Providence College. I'm Joe DeGeorgis. Today we're going to start a new phase of the course. So far we've been talking about how neurons function, how they conduct electrical action potentials, how they communicate with one another, how they transport cargoes along microtubules, and so on. But this part of the course, we're going to look at neurological diseases and disorders. And we're going to start today with one of the worst, and one that I currently study, Alzheimer's disease. It turns out that there are two forms of Alzheimer's. There's an inherited form, and there's a sporadic form. And about 90% of the cases are actually sporadic. That is, there doesn't seem to be any genetic link to that disease. Inheritable forms, there are specific genes that are mutated, and those mutated genes are passed down from generation to generation and can cause illness. The title of this paper is Early Onset Alzheimer's Disease Caused by Mutations at a Codon 717 of the Beta Amyloid Precursor Protein. It was published by Cartier Harland et al. with her friends in Nature 1991. I also wanted to mention that most of the videos we're going to watch from here on out were recorded last spring. You might recall that when the pandemic struck about a year ago, Providence College was on spring break, and I was on the island of Bonaire scuba diving. On the Monday of spring break week, the stock market crashed, and by Thursday, we found out that we wouldn't be returning to Providence College for in-face learning for the rest of the semester. Throughout the remainder of the semester, I'm going to try to update these videos, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of warning in case I say something that seems out of context. If you sense that, please let me know so I can go in and edit the footage. Thanks for your help. The first part of this video is some underwater images that I took in Bonaire. At the time, I was trying to lighten the mood a little bit, and so I put some images in here. It's just kind of a goofy movie. I hope you enjoy it. And then we'll finally get into our conversation of Alzheimer's disease. This is a green turtle, and we're diving off of a very famous dive site called Salt Pier. He's eating some sort of filamentous algae that's growing in the sand. This is the shot from Sebastian from above. There's this BFF cowfish, and they're just having lunch together. So this footage was captured this year, March 8th, 2020, during Providence College spring break. And I'm at the same location that I was before with the turtle in BFF. This is called the Salt Pier in Bonaire. It's a great dive site. And you can see that there's a large barracuda hanging out underneath this fishing boat. I'm trying to sneak up on him and get a photograph and get a video shot. The GoPro has a very wide angle, so I'm actually much closer than it looks, and the Barracuda is not very happy that I'm sneaking up on him. Now some of the light from my underwater video lights strikes him, and he didn't like that, so he kind of slithers away. I was a little too close for comfort. 
That's our dive group. And this is Sadie. She's our dive master, our leader on this dive. And she looks at me and she points to the turtle. And it's in the exact same spot that it was at in 2017. And there's a cowfish. And they're having lunch <laughs> four years later. And they're still eating this filamentous algae. Now, of course, I don't think these are the same. Two, this green turtle is kind of brown. And the other one was very green. They're the same species. It's just they have different color patterns. Um, and I'm sure it's a different cowfish too, but there he is, there's the cowfish. And there's a few other friends this time around. It's a little silver fish, I don't know what he is. I'll have to look him up. And there's Sadie. That's it. Pretty funny, huh? The same spot, the same exact behavior. So I thought that was really interesting. It was very fun. Uh, this was the first dive of the trip and it was really fantastic. I want to show you a couple of other videos because I think um, you'll enjoy them. Okay, in this video there's a parrot fish and a trumpet fish. And they're on the right side, just going around the, the uh, piling. And I'm going to hide behind the piling because I know they're going to pop out the other side. I'll try to get a video of them. So there they are, and I think the trumpet fish is trying to hide. It's, it's pretending to be part of the parrot fish. Like, hey, you can't see me. I'm I'm not even here. I'm just, I'm a parrot fish. It's kind of goofy. And then the parrot fish stops to eat some coral and he kind of knocks off the trumpet fish. And I sneak up to try to get a closer shot. Beautiful. And the parrot fish takes off and the trumpet fish races after him and climbs back on his back. They're pals. Okay, this is the last video clip I'd like to show you. It turns out Sadie is swimming over the top of the coral reef. And there are many different species of corals there. But on this piling, there's one species of coral which happens to be my favorite. And I wonder if you know why. It's called brain coral. And this one on the right is filled with Christmas tree worms. On the Wednesday before the break, we were reviewing a paper by Marie-Christine Cartier-Harlan in a letter to Nature titled, Early Onset Alzheimer's Disease Caused by Mutations at Codon 717 of the Beta Amyloid Precursor Protein. Before we get into the paper, let's review a couple of things that we said about Alzheimer's disease. First of all, there are three different forms. The first is called sporadic, and it turns out that that occurs very late in life, and there's no mutation, there's no genetic mutation associated with that form of the disease. It's sporadic, it happens, we don't know why, uh, and it happens very late in life, usually late 70s, 80s, and 90s. 
Then there are the heritable or familial forms. And those uh, are early onset. Uh, they can be as early as in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And for those forms of the disease, there is a specific genetic mutation. And, you know, there are many mutations that happen in the amyloid precursor protein, which we're going to talk about, but that's not the only gene that causes the disease. So there, there are others and other mutations that cause the early onset form, and we'll talk about those later on in the course. And then finally, there is a form associated with trisomy 21, which of course we all know is Down syndrome. And it turns out the amyloid precursor protein is located on chromosome 21. So individuals with trisomy 21 have three copies of amyloid precursor protein, or the gene for the protein. And it's thought that perhaps there's a dose effect, that those individuals make more amyloid precursor protein, and that's the condition that leads to uh, AD in those individuals. We also said that the final diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease occurs at autopsy. And if you look at a brain slice of an individual that died of Alzheimer's disease and you stain the piece of tissue, the brain slice, um, you will see these lesions, these scars essentially, uh, and uh, they're called amyloid plaques. And at some point, someone cut these lesions out of the brain slice, and they ran a protein gel. And of course, if you run a protein gel, then you get a banding pattern, and each protein appears as a band based on its molecular weight. And of course, people like to name these different bands and again, this is called an amyloid plaque, this lesion. And so they call the first band amyloid alpha. And then the next one, amyloid beta. And there's probably a gamma, delta, and so on. And it's just a common naming pattern. And at any rate, there was a lot of amyloid beta in these plaques. And if you, someone cuts out, someone cut out that band, and they sequenced its amino acid sequence, or part of it. And so now they know the amino acid sequence of this A beta molecule. And at some point, someone sequenced the RNA molecule that gives rise to this protein. Of course, it's a messenger RNA, and it has a five prime and a three prime end. And they translated the messenger RNA into all six reading frames. They find the longest open reading frame, and then they find the start site, that is the ATG that encodes the amino acid methionine. Or you could use AUG if you want to stay with RNA nomenclature. And then they find the stop codon that terminates translation. And they can then translate the coding sequence into an amino acid sequence. And they get the full length amino acid sequence. And someone realized that this fragment, the A beta fragment, is a portion of this full length translated coding sequence. So this is referred to as the amyloid precursor protein. And somehow this amyloid precursor protein gets cleaved to form this A beta fragment. And the A beta fragment is found in high abundance in these amyloid plaques, these lesions in the brain. In the paper, the authors, of course, identify a mutation in amyloid precursor protein that causes 
early onset Alzheimer's disease in a specific family that they're studying. But that's the conclusion. At the beginning, the scientists didn't know that this family had a mutation in amyloid precursor protein. All they knew was that the family suffered from an early, at, early onset form of AD. And they also knew, based on the inheritance pattern, that the disease followed an autosomal dominant pattern. So it's autosomal dominant. And of course, that infers that there's one good copy and one bad copy of the gene. Uh, you only need one bad copy in order to be afflicted. And it also suggests that that protein is being expressed. The gene that makes the wild type or the good copy of the protein makes enough to do whatever that protein does inside the body. And the bad copy must be expressed in some form. I mean, it's mutated, so it could be truncated or it could just be a single point mutation. But at any rate, that protein must be made in some form because that protein is making the individuals in the family sick. We've also talked about the term penetrance. Penetrance is the percentage of individuals that have the mutation that will ultimately experience the disease. Some genetic diseases are 100% penetrant, meaning that if the individual has the mutated gene, they will ultimately experience the disease. Other genetic disorders have a lower penetrance. Of course, some genetic diseases have a broad range of severity, and there are genetic diseases where you don't experience the disease until a certain period of life, and like Alzheimer's disease um, comes on later in life, for instance. Okay, everyone, that's it for today. We'll do part two next time. See you then.